Hi, it's Karen Boniker here, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack called Rake. This brush pack is consistent with those who enjoy uh, classical or more classic drawing skills. Um, the brushes are based around uh, pencils, chalk, very soft or gritty type brushes. So if you enjoy that kind of uh, work and enjoy drawing in particular, um, this would be a great brush pack to um, discover. So let me take you through um, some of the brushes in this and give you an idea of how each brush can be utilized. Uh, we'll start off with a brush called Blunt Gritty. And again, most of these brushes, if you go to the Shape option and select Apply Dab Stencil, you'll notice that you can apply a uh, paper texture uh, to these brushes. So oftentimes what happens with these in particular is it will give you um, a really nice uh, effect, um, a little more interest in the brush stroke. This one I really enjoy working with. Um, with nice firm pressure you'll get lots of saturation in the brush stroke. And then with softer pressure, um, much softer uh, Still, you're still going to get nice texture, but you'll get a, just a softer, more blended edge with a brush. So this one is a is a beautiful brush to use just for you know filling in large areas. Um, I'll do a big brush stroke here so you can kind of see the uh, look of that particular brush. It gives you an idea that it's kind of a hatchy crisscross, and it is set to random, so it's going to be twirling that brush and creating different. Uh, brush directions with each stroke that you lay down. And most all of these brushes will follow that same guideline where you'll want to select the uh, uh, Apply Dab Stencil if you're looking to create a little more uh, texture effect in your brush. This one is Crosshatch and it is exactly what it says in terms of working with more of a hatching uh, motion in the brush. Again, hatching is typically one direction and then back over that same brush stroke. So you can use this brush quite large to create some really interesting texture, or you can use it at a smaller brush size where you get more of that traditional look. And that is crosshatch. The next brush is called um, Dot Rake. And this one is a rake brush. Uh, again, you can use it very in a very traditional fashion where you'll want to uh, hatch your brush strokes or you can use different uh, dabbing uh, uh, strokes. In, if I use it really big, you can see it lays down kind of a ribbon of dots. So depending upon what you're looking for, I used it um, in the horses here to create some, um, you know, some additional texture. Again, this brush does have a reset setting, so if you brought the bleed up and take the reset down to zero, you can actually softly blend with that brush as well. That's Dot Rake. The next brush is really just for fun. It's um, what we call a fern rake, and it basically gives you the little shape of a, a fern. So you could use it in drawings or in some landscape paintings where you needed to paint in uh, some ferns. Um, it's set to pressure so you can use it very with very soft pressure and then as you apply more pressure you're going to get a bigger brush stroke. The next brush is Gritty Blender and what I will do is take the reset up on that so I can paint with it and then take it to default and you can see that it's a really lovely blending brush. Beautiful for edges so if you are doing some portrait work um, and you're looking for hard and soft edges this would be a really nice brush to use for that. The next brush is called Gritty Hatch and this is one of my favorite brushes. I'll give you a big view of it so you can see it in large size. 
and again it is set to uh, pressure and direction so it's going to be moving in a circular direction as you lay down the brush stroke uh, a beautiful brush for texture work uh, you can see that it naturally is hatching the brush strokes so you could definitely build up different color values with hatch uh, light dark to light or light to dark and it does most of the hatching for you so you may want to try that one it's a beautiful brush to use gritty pencil is the brush that I use to create these two stallions um, it's a lovely uh, pencil uh, more uh, gritty but more like chalk in a lot of respects um, so it has some texture to it it you can also apply dab stencil so if you're looking to work with a certain paper texture and increase the texture and the look of texture in that brush yeah you can certainly do that and we'll set it to reset uh, reset it to default and we're back to a really nice uh, really nice sketching brush so I, I use it uh, I've been using it a lot in my own work just for creating my first initial sketches and it's a really nice brush to work with the next brush is called Gritty Shader, and this one again is a um, how you use this one is firm pressure. I'll go a little bigger on this brush. Firm pressure uh, gives you lots of saturation, and soft pressure is going to blend. And any time that you're working with these brushes or working with any new brush pack it's always a good idea to open your uh, brush calibration and calibrate your brushes just to your particular stylus pressure and that will help you to get the best out of every brush that you work with so this is a really lovely brush a lot of high hatching strokes The next brush is Joyful Rake, and this is a, a really fun brush to use. Um, I'm going to actually open the advanced brush controls here, and we're going to go to the media panel and um, to the blending panel. So Joyful Rake is just a fun kind of expressive uh, texture brush that you can use to um, make I call them joyful brush strokes so if you're looking to um, add something special to a certain part of your drawing um, you just want to explore how expressive and loose the brush is you can just play with it um, you can see how I'm working with this one as I go back over the initial brush uh, sketch marks on the horses So this one is Joyful Rake in large size. You can see it's full of nice texture. You could use it for, um, I'm even, even thinking you could use it for, um, you know, some flowers or stems and then paint the flowers on the end. That would be another way you could use this brush. Lazy Lacy Hatch is another favorite brush here, and I'm going to just show you how I would work with this. Um, what I might do over here is go a little darker, and then back over to darken further. So again, your hatch marks. Are really done for you. And the firmer pressure you put on this brush, the, more, the darker the saturation of the color will be. And the lighter pressure, you can notice that it's a little lighter. These brushes also are beautiful as you go back over them and do some hatch marks. And you can see how you can build on color. 
and that is Lacey Hatch Shading Rake. And we'll look at this brush nice and big. And you can see that it's another uh, highly textured brush, Capture Dab. And uh, in the default size, uh, you can certainly use it to um, you know, develop shading areas, portrait work. It's beautiful for edges to add a little extra texture. And um, you can, of course, go over your brush strokes and you get a beautiful textural uh, effect. Again, anytime you have a reset setting on a brush, bring the bleed up, the reset down, and you've got a beautiful soft edge blender now. If you like the brush as a blender, uh, then what you should do is go to brushes and save variant. Save it with a new name like Shading Rake Blender and uh, you'll have another brush that you can build on in this brush category. Shading is another nice brush. Again, this one is one that you would want to work with a traditional cross hash motion. And those of you that are lucky enough to have the art pen, you can certainly set all these brushes to rotation and get full barrel rotation in these brushes as well. The next brush is called Spot Hatch and it is a hatching brush made of little dots and I'll show it to you nice and big and you certainly could use it for other things other than sketching but in the default size it's pretty small but it's a good brush for adding additional texture where you might want it and firm pressure, you're going to get lots of saturation. And light pressure, a little bit of blending. And softer, more uh, softer paint. Not as saturated. And Texture Rake is the next brush. This brush, again, if you're lucky enough to have the art pen, you'll want to set that to rotation at angle range 360 and angle step at about 4, or whatever is good for you. Um, I like this brush uh, for creating the effect of hair as well. So when you use it at a really small brush size, uh, right about here I think is good on this one. And kind of go back and forth and then up and down you can create a very nice um, hatchy hair quality so back and forth up and down and I'll zoom in nice and close so you can see this my brush situated in the angle that I want. So I'm just going to kind of go through this area here, back and forth, up and down. And so anywhere where you might be looking for kind of an interesting textured hatching effect or rake effect, as we call it. And that is Texture Rake. The next brush is called Weave. And we'll reset that to default. 
Control A backspace and clear that canvas off. And you can see that in nice big size, this is a weave type brush. Again, very, very nice brush for texture work. You can set the apply dab stencil option here and enhance the texture even further on this brush. This is using small dots in the default paper texture. And uh, at default size, you know, it's beautiful for creating just nice textural effect. Firm pressure again, lots of saturation, soft pressure, blended soft edges. So that's an introduction to the rake brush pack for painter and I hope you'll have a lot of fun with it as much as I did. Enjoy. Take care.